Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So in today's episode we are going to be painting yet another portrait painting. Uh, I still haven't come up with the title of what this show is going to be called. I read some of your suggestions, um, the Yupari experience or just titling it Yupari and then uh, the Brave Brush. I really like the Brave Brush but a lot of you really wanted uh, my name to be in the title so if you have any idea of what you want this painting show or what you think this painting show should be titled please let me know this is definitely going to be in the style of the uh, beloved Bob Ross but just think of me as the Bob Ross of portrait painting but it's not just portrait painting we're going to do many other things in the show I do want to move on into uh, some still life painting or some more still life painting and landscape painting and all of that but let's let's go ahead and get started with the painting here so the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of odorless mineral spirits onto this brush. You will have an image, a photo reference of our model Samantha in the top left corner of your screen throughout the scenes where you see me actually painting. Okay, so just a little bit of odorless mineral spirits into my uh, drawing brush. Okay, uh, we're working on a 16 by 20 inch cotton canvas and so it's a little bit larger um, the main thing in the beginning, as it always is, is to look for the placement, okay? So if that's the top of the head, and let's suppose that is the, uh, the hairline, okay? So suppose that's the hairline. Let's go all the way down here. And let's suppose the chin is going to be about there. So I'm thinking of the placement first. The first step is always going to be composition. So... The most important thing with composition is making sure that all of your shapes fit in in such a way that you are inspired to continue working on your painting. And it just takes a simple, a few simple brush strokes really uh, to, you know, get an idea of where everything is going to be placed. So I think something about like that is where I want the head to be placed. Um, you know, not completely centered, a little bit higher up. I'm already making a decision as to how I'm going to crop uh, and create a vignette, okay? So vignette just means the areas of the painting that you leave uh, unfinished to complement the areas that are more finished. So this is going to be the area that's going to be more finished and this is going to be the area that's going to be less finished, okay? So now that I know roughly where I want the head to be placed, now the next thing is to start to move into the block in stage. So the block in stage, okay, is just using a simple sh a set of straight lines and angles uh, to simplify the forms, okay? So we're simplifying the immense complexity of, you know, eyes, nose, and mouth into just a few simple straight lines and angles. So that's the corner of the concavity of the eye socket on one side. Okay, so here's the corner of the eye socket on the other side and I usually will prioritize the eyes and the nose meaning the main triangle okay so that's what we're gonna do here and if the chin needs to raise at all the chin is relatively much easier to raise than say the um, than the eyes okay so let's go ahead and just make a little mark there for the forehead. So I'm going to say it's going to go about there. Okay, so now let's go ahead just roughly place a little mark for where the eye is going to fit and about there on one side. Here's the shape over here and there's the nose. Just a simple little mark there. Okay. There's the bulb of the nose. And then the eye. The eye on the other side. But we're not really seeing too much of it. So, you know, if it's barely visible in the photo reference or if you're working from life, then just make it barely visible in your painting. So you don't have to make up information if it's not there. So there's a little triangle for the cast shadow. Simple little shape there for the eye. 
the iris that is. Okay, so now we're going to start to draw in the shadow. We can actually push this shape inwards a little bit. So this is, um, I want to say this is the part of the painting that's probably the most analytical when it comes to portrait painting. And this is one of the things, this is really the thing that makes portrait painting, in my opinion, very, very difficult is the, you, you, you know, the drawing, trying to get the drawing just right. And you know, I'll let you in on a little secret, okay? It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, okay? If you look at some of the most, uh, you know, famous portrait paintings throughout history, they're not photographic in nature. Okay, so there's no need to stress too much, okay, about trying to make it exactly perfect. A little bit more mineral spirits. Okay, so now we're gonna move our way down. I'm gonna use a vertical. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to move the chin up a little bit, and that's okay. As I said, I'm prioritizing the main triangle, okay? So see how it's not very difficult. It's not too difficult to move the chin up, just a single brush stroke, maybe two, maybe three, but not too many brush strokes needed to make that change. And yet, I'm still not going to worry about the chin or about the mouth. You know, just making sure that that point, uh, you know, corresponds with this point. Okay, so now let's make a little indication for where the ear is going to fit. So I'm going to relate it to the corner of the nose. It goes about there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and look at the distance from the side of the eye socket to the hair. So that I can actually move inwards a little bit. Say to about there. A little more mineral spirits. Okay, so now I'm going to move this little angle. See how we're building more specificity onto, the, onto that more generic shape that we started with. And see how I'm kind of uh, working through my arm? You know, I, I try to keep myself at about an arm's length away from the painting. Just to have a little more objectivity with my shapes. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in. Uh, let's first make a little point here for where the, the neck ends down towards here. Now let's go ahead and draw very swiftly here the cast shadow. Okay, this is the form shadow. All right. And right down here is the cast shadow. It's a shadow that's being casted. A little more mineral spirits and burnt umber. So we're almost about there with the umber sketch. The umber sketch that is the, you know, the the block in with the burnt umber color. Okay. And again, I'm going to be cropping that area. So no need to worry about it. Now for the mouth, again, just a few simple marks will do. I'm going to, I usually compare the corner of the mouth to the corner of the nose. So if the corner of the nose is here, then the corner of the mouth should exist somewhere about there. And now the side of the mouth goes there. And less is more is usually a thing with the mouth. You know, you can find yourself spending 20 minutes just trying to, you know, put all the little intricacies, um, you know, when you're drawing a mouth only to find out that the mouth needs to be moved. So 
So that's where something I usually say comes into play. Keep your shapes simple and easy, okay? Keep your shapes simple and easy so that when the time comes to make any kind of changes, and they kind of always do, uh, those changes are simple and easy to manage, okay? So that's pretty good, I'd say, for the placement of the mouth. I'm not gonna stress too much on that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, uh, before getting into the, um, the next stage, so I'm just very lightly going to uh, sketch in some of the half tones, okay? So there's one right there, okay? And there was one there that we actually had already put in. And see right there, this is a simple little mark for the cheekbone, the zygomatic bone. Just a few little little indicators here and there. Now, the trick is um, with the umber sketch and to work very, very fast, uh, because that's something I have to do uh, when I'm filming in this style, is to know your materials really well. So um, I actually toned this surface about, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes ago. Uh, I just thinned out the uh, burnt umber color uh, with a, a a little bit of odorless mineral spirits and a microfiber cloth. And what I did was uh, just rub the tone onto the surface. Um, now what that does is it allows the paint to move quite a lot, but at the same time, it's not completely dry. So it's kind of the perfect consistency, if you will, for me. Okay, so yeah, we're seeing just a little corner over here. And I'm trying to emphasize the, the drawing in particular with this one. Um, before I get into the planes, into the large plane stage, okay? So that's about good, that's about good. And as I was saying with those half tones, I just wanted to sketch a few little indicators in there for the half tones, but it's very important to, you know, have a sense of the poster image. That is basically that, the two dimensional construct, you know, of just light and shadow. Okay. So a little, a few little marks there, all right. Now we're set to get into the next stage. And the next stage is going to be the large plane stage. So that's where I'm gonna to start to use bristle brushes. So I'm gonna transition into bristle brushes. And now since I'm gonna be mixing color, uh, if you wanna know exactly what uh, materials I'm using, and if you would like to purchase the same type of materials that I'm using, I have the um, colors listed in the description box down below along with their affiliated Amazon links for most of the colors. There's a little bit of Venetian red, titanium white, and nickel yellow. I usually start with this plane. Um, I usually say pick a plane, any plane. Um, so I just decided to start with that one. And so I'm gonna be using a, uh, a dark brush and a light brush. So no need to complicate the colors. Just burnt umber. Uh, let's say a little bit of a lizard and cadmium red flake white. Okay, so we're just moving one step down. It's probably more than one step down, to be honest. And value, so now we're really going to be looking at the values. And remember, value just means the relative lightness or darkness of a given plane. Okay. All right, so with the, with the large plane stage, the important thing really is to, you know, analyze the forms, study the forms, and make sure that, um, you know, you're conveying a sense of a three-dimensional image with just, you know, just a few simple, simple colors. No need to complicate it too much. Life is already complicated enough. 
And portrait painting is definitely already complicated enough. So now as I work my way up, as you notice, I'm still focusing on the main triangle, okay? The main triangle is still uh, my, my major focus. And that again is, as I said before, any, if anything needs to move, I'd rather it be the chin or the hairline than it be the eyes and the nose. So that's why I'm prioritizing the main triangle. So a little more of a half turn there. And a little more light up here. Now for the bottom of the nose, I'm going to make it a little more red. So there's our permanent rose. This plane right here. We're going to make it a little lighter. So what you're seeing on the palette here starting to develop is the color value web. So I'm kind of, I kind of start to develop the color value web as I paint. In the past, I would just try to pre-mix them in a way. But these days, since I have to move so fast, I just kind of tend to pre-mix them already. So a little bit of the drawing color into this shape right here. And I'm actually gonna get the, uh, the drawing brush. Let's get the drawing brush. A little bit of alizarin, burnt umber. And let's just see if that alone will give us this dark value that we need for the nostril. And it does, which is pretty nice. Okay, so standing back. Okay, so, you know, whenever I stand back, it's still that I can gain objectivity. Okay, just to gain a little bit of objectivity on my shapes. So now we're going to move on to the bulb of the nose. Okay, so here we are just utilizing the color value web, just moving one step up in terms of the value. Okay. Now we're going to keep moving up on the value scale. Simple and easy. No need to complicate anything here. Okay, so I'm going to stand back again. Okay, so now I'm going to again look at this plane. Let's throw in some of the sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna can still get darker. And what I'm going to have to do now is paint in that shadow color, this shadow color. So let's just go ahead and put this plane in. So right now this is competing with this, which it shouldn't. I'm going to use the drawing color. So let's just say burnt sienna, sap green, a little bit of permanent rose. Let's try this out. That's too red. So let's throw in chrome green. And it's a little better, okay? So this dark can actually come down here beneath the lower eyelid and over here. So let's go ahead and draw this in. Now, as I draw it, the, uh, as I put in this large plane for the shadow, I'm also going to soften a little bit around here. So I'm using a clean and dry synthetic just to soften that shape a little bit. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to get a smaller brush Where's my brush? So a smaller brush, and now we're going to paint in the, the white of the eye, also known as the sclera. So I'm going to use a little bit of Neo McGill, a little bit of black and white. Remember, the white of the eye is not white. It's usually some type of halftone. And the combination of colors for it is very simple. Okay, there you will go. So it's black and white and a little bit of flesh tone. That's all it is. Now we're putting that tone in. And now with the same brush, actually let's, let's not get lazy. I'm going to 
get us a different brush. Different brush. So the Neo McGilp, Burnt Umber, Sap Green, Chrome Green. We're going to put in the color here for the iris. Okay. And we're going to use that same color to put the, um, the dark shape, the accent for the eyelids. Remember, an accent is when one form meets another form. Blocks out the light and looks really dark. That's all it is. Okay, now that we have that, let's put that brush aside. Get another little tiny brush. Add a little more Neo McGill. Just using what's already on the, uh, the palette in terms of flesh tone. We're going to put in simple little flesh tone here for the lower eyelid, okay? Nice and simple. Now, the lower eyelid is much darker than the upper eyelid in this instance. So, let's just paint it how we see it. Okay? Now, I'm actually going to go back to the, um, the dark brush that we had. Okay, I'm going to go and make it a little warmer. Similar color to the iris, just a little warmer. That's actually a little too warm, so let's get the ultramarine blue. Oh, that's nice. So that's a dark color right there for the, um, for the tear duct. Okay, and actually I see that shape going all up here. So in fact, we are uh, utilizing the next stage actually with the eye, which is the small plane stage. Okay, so this was large plane. Now we're going into small plane for the eye. And that is because we're going to be gauging everything based on the eye, okay? So now back to the lighter brush. The lighter flesh tone brush, that is. The upper eyelid looks a little cooler, so let's put a little bit of chrome green into this color here. No need to complicate things. Okay. And there we just about almost have a finished eye. So now we're going to start to relate all of the shapes to the eyes, okay? In this case, just the one eye. Well, you know, we see a little bit of the other eye, so let me not get lazy, okay? So every black, alizarin, so we're seeing just a little bit, okay? And as I'm putting in this shape, I'm actually um, drawing in a little bit more of a specific shape for the um, for the eye socket. Okay. And we can be lazy sometimes, right? So I'm just going to use the same brush. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't come back to bite me. So using the same brush, darker flesh tone for that area right there. Okay. Same brush again. Pushing that in a little bit. And this is how we draw with color. You can also go ahead and use that for the bulb of the nose. Very simple. Okay. And of course, there's a little bit of flesh tone there that I'm kind of missing. So let's go ahead and stand back first. All right, and after standing back, I see that I can um, I can move the nose up a little bit. And like I said, that was gonna happen, right? I had to relate everything to the eyes. So now based on the eyes, I'm gonna move the nose up a little bit, okay? And not that much, 
not that much. So let's use the alizarin and the sap green. Alizarin and the sap green. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to move it, I'd say right about there. That might be pushing it, but oh, I think we'll be fine. Now just a little bit of ivory black there. All right, so while we're doing this, let's go ahead and get another brush, clean it off with a little bit of odorless mineral spirits. And now we're gonna put back that, uh, or place in that color for the side of the nose. So let's, let's just use the flesh tone that's already on here. Okay. So a little more Neo Magoop. Just using the flesh tone that's already on here. There we go. Now we have that shape there. And now I'm gonna go back in with that darker color. Let's add some ultramarine to it. And let's take a look at this shape. It's very thin and narrow. So we're pushing that back in. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, get a different brush, okay? And now we're gonna start to mix up and paint in some of the colors for the lips. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the um, alizarin right into the flesh tones. No need to complicate that mixture. And now with the lip, Okay, I still, I consider this large plain stage for the lips, okay. Making it a little darker. For the lower portion. And darker over here. Now we're just gonna use the same color, but just lighter. Again, using the color value web. on the palette, lighter yet again, right over there. See how quick we can move along if we just create a little rail of flesh tone over there. Nice and simple. Okay, so now let's continue our, our little endeavor down here. So let's say I put this brush down, switch back to the drawing brush. Okay, so now, now I'm gonna start to relate colors to one another, so I'm gonna actually make the dark of the shadow underneath the lower lip a little bit cooler. So I threw in some of the chrome green and burnt umber. Just to add a nice little contrast of color. And let's even put that over there. Okay, and now let's uh, add some cadmium orange. Why not? Let's experiment with this. This might go really, really bad, but let's see. So a little bit of the cadmium orange for the cast shadow from the nose. And the form shadow is kind of missing, so let's just use some of that color that was already on the palette. And created a color very similar to that of the lips. Okay. All right, now back to the ivory black, burnt umber, nostril, yet again, okay. So now while we still have this color, the, uh, the orangey kind of color, let's go ahead and start to use it to draw out the um, the shadow for the chin and the mandible. Okay, so again, I'm just using this to draw a little bit and then we're gonna attack those large planes. And 
I'd say about there. I had to move the chin up. Since I had to move the mouth up, uh, the chin, or I had to move the nose, then the mouth, then the chin, but it's always a tiny little increment. It's not really that much uh, with portraiture. So that's why I recommend to, you know, go in with the eyes first. Uh, try to figure out where those eye sockets are placed relative to the large shape of the, um, the skull over here. Okay, so what do you say we now start to attack the large planes, okay? So now we're gonna return to the bristle brushes and with the half tone brush, or should I say the dark brush because all of these, both of these brushes are gonna be pretty much used for some of the half tones really. And the eyebrow, I'm probably gonna knock the eyebrow right off and then put it back. Okay, so now you're gonna see me go back and forth between the light brush and the dark brush. And what this does is it just helps me move faster. A little more titanium white. There's a really, really light plane. So titanium white, the nickel yellow. Really light plane over here. I almost smashed the brush right through the canvas there. Okay, where else is there a really, really light plane while we're at it? Right over here. Okay, and it's it looks almost like it's straight white, the titanium white, but it isn't. It has a little bit of influence from the um, the nickel yellow. Okay, so we're just going in and putting in that bright plane, you know, in areas that are very similar. Okay, all right, so now let's move on down. And as you see, I really, really prioritize the forms of the face. I try to think about it as three-dimensionally as possible. Okay, thinking about the directionality of each one of these planes. I'm gonna switch to the half-tone brush and a little bit of cadmium green for this little side plane here. Single brush stroke ought to do. And now we're gonna use some of the color from the, the lips for these warmer side planes. No need to complicate it. No need to complicate it. So this plane is kind of walking its way up towards uh, the parietal, uh, parietal. What is that called? The temporal region of the skull, uh, the um, cheekbone. The zygomatic bone is just very gently walking its way up here. And as I said, we pretty much obliterated um, the eyebrow, the eyebrows, well, the other one's still in there, but that's okay. So now a little bit of the, the red from the lips, this little side plane there. And now this little side plane is getting lighter as it walks its way up towards the cheeks. A little bit of nickel yellow. As we start to close up the forms, let's add a little more of this reddish color. Nice and simple. Now for the, um, the top plane of the orbicularis oris, this is the orbicularis oris down here and up towards here, here, and here. It's the form that surrounds the mouth, basically. So, it's got a top plane right over here. Okay. And as I put that in, I'm going to soften the cast shadow of the nose. Whoops. Made a little mistake there. But that's okay. Oil paint is very forgiving. And now 
a little bit of yellow ochre, cadmium green, and we're gonna start to put in the top plane for the chin. Okay, now we're a little bit darker, using the color value web. Whoops, I got paint on my hand. And that's okay. It's all right if you have paint on your hand. Now we're just gonna soften. Now you see the green that we put here is really contrasting quite nicely uh, with the flesh tones as we start to paint them in. Now we're gonna put in another little half tone here right next to the shadow shape. Okay, and now all up towards here. We're gonna have a very graceful little half tone. Simple little half tone moving its way up there. Another half tone over here. Very subtle, very, very subtle. And remember, subtlety is obtained. You obtain subtlety by getting the values so, so close to one another, yet you maintain their um, variation or their differentiation between one another. So moving this down, very subtle, okay? Don't want these values to contrast too much down here. There we go, nice and simple. Now we're gonna put some of the more pinkish colors. So we work our way up towards here. Okay, now it's gonna get lighter until we reach the point where we need to switch brushes, which is right about now, into the lighter brush. Let's use a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep. Cadmium yellow deep. Nice and simple there. No need to complicate things. Now we're gonna use the synthetic brush. Just to soften a little bit. Now you're starting to see the the volume, the volume of the planes of the face really starting to take shape now. And I try to utilize the tone of the canvas wherever possible, wherever possible. And that just helps me move much, much faster. And let's just soften this area up here around the, um, the eyebrow. And um, you may recognize this model from some of my older painting videos uh, back from the, the daily Yupari when I was uploading these daily. I believe Samantha, the model here, was the first one in the daily Yupari series. But yes, if, you, if you're noticing that I tend to repeat uh, some of the models, I, uh, <laughs> I really I need to um, you know, start taking more photo references uh, these days. With this new series that I'm coming up with, um, you know, whether it's going to be called um, you know, The Brave Brush or Yupari's Art Studio, or whatever we're going to call this series, I really do want to you know, create my own original works. Um, that that means that I'm really going to have to take my own photo references or you know utilize photo references um, as opposed to doing the master studies just for the sake of you know being able to market these paintings. I do want to be able to sell these paintings. So just drawing the edge on the corner of the chin there. There. It's a little better. Now I just want to make sure that I get the, um, 
the angle for the chin there. And I'd be careful of 90 degree angles. That right there is too close to 90 degree. So I'm gonna soften, when in doubt, blur it out. So I'm just gonna soften a little bit down there. I'm gonna push this dark shape up. And we're gonna, let's say, make this the sharpest edge. And then let it get softer as we move up there. And how are we gonna soften it? With the softening brush, with the um, clean and dry synthetic. See that? Almost like a ghost, ghost-like edge up there. Now you're really getting a sense of volume with this. Okay, so now the ear. Say the ear is doing all right uh, where I have placed it. So let's put this brush down and let's just continue with the large planes. Now, as you notice, I'm not contrasting the, um, the flesh tones quite as much as the photo reference is. And that's just because I think the photo reference is a little too contrasty. Okay. So always, always, always remember that you do not have to paint exactly what the photo reference is telling you. In most cases, the photo reference is kind of deceiving you in a way because it just doesn't see the way that we humans see. Or so I tell myself. So now I'm pushing this back. Okay. And I kind of just, um, I just dry clean the, the clean and dry synthetic. All right, so now we're gonna use, uh, let's say a different brush. So another one of these bristle brushes that I enjoy. Um, this is my favorite brand of bristle brush, by the way. It is made by Robert Simmons. Uh, Robert Simmons, the, the brand, it's Signet, S-I-G-N-E-T. And again, there will be links in the description box down below. So you can pick yourself up the same kind of brushes that I'm using. And these bristle brushes, they really do last a long time. Uh, the ones that I'm using for these planes here, you know, I've had those brushes. I've been using them for so many, and I mean so many, a lot and a lot of um, paintings and they really can take a beating and still, you know, produce what I want them to produce. So let's switch to the lighter brush. Let's put in some Venetian red, just a touch of Venetian red. Just to add a little more of the warm flavor for the ear. And again, no need to complicate things. So let's let the ear just just be simple, just a few simple marks there. All right, as we're drawing in the cast shadow for the neck. Okay. Now let's uh, let's put a little bit of the cadmium green as we start to put in the. Uh, this is, I believe, this is actually in light but it's so similar, it's a diffuse light. It's so similar to the cast shadow of the neck, or on the neck that is. And then the, let's, how about we just experiment with color a little bit. Let's have some fun with color. Let's push the um, reflected light a little bit, uh, I wanna say, Let's use the, yeah, this one. So let's push it a little more orangey. So we're using cadmium orange. And just a little, having a little fun there. We're pushing it a little more orange. And now back to the softening brush. Okay, I'm gonna stand back to see if that's too orange. I think it's doing all right. But after standing back, 
this edge was bothering me. So I have to soften it a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to switch back to the, um, oh, what do you say? We just use this brush. Just get right from the color value web. And again, I still think I can have some more drama up here with this value. Let's put that brush back down. Soften a little bit up here. All right, now that's looking much more dimensional, but she needs an eyebrow, you know? I mean, okay, you don't have to have eyebrows. You can shave off your eyebrows, you can do whatever you wanna do. This is 2019, approaching 2020. You can look however you wanna look, okay? Um, but she does have an eyebrow there, so I'm gonna to have to paint it in pretty, pretty quickly, so. Let me first just get the top plane situated a little better. A little lighter up there. All right, so now we're gonna get, uh, let's say this one, this little brush here, Neo McGilp. Add a little bit of the teal, just to make it a little bit cooler. All right, so now let's go ahead and start to paint. And you know what? That's probably too blue and too light. So more burnt umber. Let's just mix into here, into here. That's a little better. And now we're just letting the paint do some of the work. So I'm applying less pressure to make it less dark, more pressure where I want it to be darker. Hopefully that makes sense. Softening over here. That looks pretty close. It's all right. Now let's just go ahead and put this one here. It's for good measure. All right, and what do you say? <clears throat> All right, so what do you say now? We put in a little mark, so a little bit of alizarin, crimson, permanent rose. And I still keep getting paint on my hand. That's okay. A little mark there to separate the corner of the tragus of the ear. And now what do you say we use the shadow brush to start to paint in the hair? So ultramarine blue. Burnt Umber. Well, first I want to differentiate the hairline and then I'll go ahead and cover the rest for the hair. So I'm making this as soft as possible. So I'm gonna have to go back and forth between the um, halftone brush and the brush for the, the hair color basically. So I'm gonna wanna go back and forth between these colors. Just to get a nice soft edge, holding too many brushes here. Okay, now I'm just holding two brushes. And of course, as I put that brush down, I realize I need it again. So there's a little bit of flesh tone showing for the partition of the hair. Okay, so let's make it cooler. Some of the teal. So I'm putting in a little bit more than I need. Okay. A little bit more than I need. Just so I can go and paint right onto it. Again, just so I can paint right onto it with the dark brush. Just like that. Okay. 
Okay. Now we're going to cover the back of the ear. All right, I'm going to soften a little bit. And I'm going to stand back. Yet again. All right, so after standing back, I see that the face is pretty much where I want it to be. So now it's just kind of a few uh, little things uh, here and there to do on the face. But really, it's going to be time to start to move in to the surrounding shapes now. So let me just do a few little things. So this little mark here from the original drawing, uh, the, uh, the umber sketch that is. Just want to get rid of it. And then this little line here. Just soften it so it doesn't draw too much attention to itself and just leave that be. And now I'm going to continue to cover for the hair and then get into the shapes surrounding the hair. So actually I want to have two brushes uh, working simultaneously here. So let me get a larger brush, a little bit of Neo McGilp. Uh, let's use a combination of the alizarin and the permanent rose and a little bit of ultramarine blue, some of the cadmium red. We want a nice and dark red. That's kind of bright. Ooh, that's a nice red. That's a very nice red. Okay, so now how about we get a little crazy? Some dioxazine purple, more Neil McGilt medium. Ooh. Dioxazine purple into the hair? No way. Yes way, we can. <laughs> we can put dioxazine purple into the hair as long as we have other values and other colors that make sense. So you can actually do with color what you want as long as the values are working together uh, with one another. So again, we're gonna push darker over here. Okay, and now we're going to use the, uh, oh dear, yeah, this brush is near the end of its life. So this is actually a cheaper bristle brush. Um, so yeah, you kind of pay the price with the cheaper brushes in the end, really. It's uh, shoveling the paint a little bit, which is not something I want, but it'll work for now. And I'm not going to cover the entire uh, background with this color. So just, just a little bit. And I like to keep the background with these paintings rather abstract. You have to push so much that even the easel is almost going to fall over. So that's the thing. Pushing that back. Okay. All right. So. Let's go back in with the dioxazine purple and ivory black. I'm putting in some of the dark for the back of the hair. So I'm going to paint these shapes right next to one another. Okay, just so I don't lose the boundary between them. Okay, and then to fill them in, fill in the little boundary between them. I'm going to use the softening brush, which will also help me have a clean edge between them, between those shapes, and an edge that is not too sharp. We don't want it to be too sharp. And how about we change things up a little bit here? A little bit of alizarin, uh, just for some fun. Let's also throw that back here. We're putting in the, the hair, going all down there. Be okay, careful now, I don't want to cut off the corner of her nose. That wouldn't be good right now, huh? All right, now returning to the softening brush. Soft and little by little, the edges surrounding the hair. Okay. And now, as I said, the stuff down here 
I'm going to vignette. Oh man, this brush is, I should throw this brush out. It's not cooperating with me. Oh well, but such is life. Now a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use the dioxazine purple again. A little bit darker back here. And again, the background is gonna be rather abbreviated. Kind of a nice little abstract shape, abstraction. Let's cover all down here. That eh, should be all right for the background. Now, do I wanna use the same brush? No, I don't. Now I'm gonna switch brushes here. So I'm gonna use the cadmium orange, burnt sienna, cadmium orange and burnt sienna, neo McGilt medium. Nope, nope, more burnt sienna. And let's throw in some burnt umber. There we go, so that's the color that we want. Probably a little too dark, so back to the cadmium orange. There we go, that's the color that we want for the shirt. And again, I'm gonna let all of this kind of fade away. And by fading away, by fading away, I mean I'm just gonna let some of the, um, the brush strokes just kind of get softer and softer towards the bottom, so. Just like so. That's what I meant right there. About the brush strokes getting softer and softer. No need to worry if we cover the hair a little bit. We'll go right back in. You know, I'm gonna thin it out. Odorless mineral spirits just a little bit, just to get the paint to flow a little more. And will also help with the, um, the effect that we want. If the paint starts dripping or something, that's even better. A little bit of a darker color, just to kind of suggest the um, where the arm is going to fit. And uh, a little more, just to show that we at least know how to draw the shoulder. Let's compare this angle. Yeah, yeah, i say about there. Now, Put this brush aside. Back to the color for the hair. I did say that I would put the hair back on here. And as we're doing that, let's go ahead and get the um, flesh color brush. The lighter one that is. Whoa, that's too cold. So a little bit of uh, cadmium red and permanent rose. There we go. And again, I'm just letting it kind of touch the um, the hair a little bit. And you know what? I do want to push this a little bit higher. There, so about there, should be fine. A little bit of a half tone there for the clavicle. Let's use the colors already on the palette. Okay, and then soften as we go. Softening all throughout here. So the um, the shoulder, the top plane of the shoulder is gonna be much lighter. So I'm using the cadmium yellow deep, the nickel yellow, titanium white, very thick. So we're gonna paint very thickly on here. Is that even a word? Thickly. We're just gonna paint really thick onto the shoulder. Okay. And then we're gonna drop the value down a little bit. So even the shoulder, okay, even the shoulder is gonna have some plane changes. No surprise there. See the hair has planes lighter here, darker here, darker here, lighter there, though I kind of didn't explain it as I was painting it in there. But everything in here has planes, you know. Minus the shirt, really. I, I didn't really put much for the shirt. So we're gonna use, let's use the um, 
softening brush to get a very nice and simple edge, simple edge over here. And as you're noticing, um, that brush is getting a little bit dirty. So now I'm gonna switch. So I just switched to another um, synthetic brush to soften all over here. I'm gonna stand back, and as I stand back, I see that uh, I need my other brush. There it is. Nope, where is it? This one. Okay, so the darker brush, I actually have to move this down move it down then I'm going to switch back to the synthetic brush very cautious not to lose this distinction between light and shadow that would cause some issues if I did so let's just uh, soften here to get the edge that we want a lot of variety of edges in this one. Lots of variety. Softening even more down here. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the flesh tones. Just put in a little top plane here. Then a side plane for the clavicles. Though I don't want to make the clavicles too um, sharp. The way I have it right now, I think the clavicles are too sharp. So I think I'm just going to soften the clavicles a little bit. All I want really is a clean uh, distinction between the top plane of the shoulder, clavicles, you know, even just a simple brush stroke for the clavicles, and that's about it really. I don't want too much more for that. Let's just soften this edge over here, and then get back to where we were earlier with the here. Now I'm going to stand back. All right, that's looking pretty good. I think that I'm just gonna soften a few more edges and I think we just about have a finished portrait. Softening as I go. So now I'm really in the um, the final stage, and um, this is the selective render. Okay, so now I'm going to selectively um, add more information to some areas, or soften some edges. As I'm doing here, I'm choosing to soften some edges. You always want to have a nice variety between your edges, okay? You don't want all your edges to be too soft or all your edges to be too sharp. You want a nice variety of edges. So again, we're gonna soften over here, but I'm very cautious not to lose the distinction between this plane and this plane. There is a way I can over soften it and I don't want to do that. Okay, I think to about there. Now I'm gonna stand back again. So I usually like to stand back to see, uh, you know, where I need to make any kind of changes. The chin might need to raise a little bit. Okay. And like I was saying, you don't have to make it, you know, exactly like the photo reference. But I think that raising the chin won't hurt. And it's always a very tiny adjustment. It's always very, very tiny, kind of like a like a little centimeter, really. 
tiny, tiny adjustments. Softening, we're gonna soften over here again. And um, what I'm doing is I'm basically just making sure that uh, the painting is ready to be photographed. Meaning I'm just trying to take care of all the little things that I wouldn't want to show up in the final image. Oh, you know what? Let's take some of this color, put in this little half tone. Just kind of sneak that half tone in there. Yep, very simple. The lips. Lips, lips, lips. Clean off the brush with the mineral spirits. Paint in very thin mineral spirits. I don't want it to be as thin as a uh, ink, but a little bit thinner. Now, what worries me is there's paint on my hand, which means <laughs> there's probably paint on my face somewhere. Oh well, occupational hazard. Nope, nope, too light. There. Little tiny, tiny things now. Tiny, tiny stuff. I may have been able to move this eye a little bit more to uh, the right. You kind of you have to pick and choose your battles. That's where I'm going to say that, you know, I'm going to just let it be, let the eye be how it is. And uh, instead just adjust the glabella. Oof, very, very precise brush strokes. Very, very subtle, almost. Okay, that's gonna be smaller than a centimeter. That's probably closer to a millimeter of a um, adjustment. Super tiny. And uh, again, I'm gonna pick and choose my battles, okay? So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to live with that. I'll be fine with the, um, you know, the eye being a little bit to the right, but it's not, not too much of a concern. All right, I'm gonna stand back again. And I think we just about have it. That being said, I really hope that today's episode helps you out. I wanna say one thing though, um, before uh, we end today's episode. For those of you that are uh, patrons on my Patreon account, I, I do have to apologize for um, something that's been going on um, in terms of just me and my personal life and my work. It's just stuff I'm not going to talk about. But what I am going to say is if you are on my Patreon, I'm going to start to uh, post specific information for the Patreon and for the pledges, the things that I have to do for the pledges, such as the, the critiques, uh, the streams and all of that stuff that's going to be happening very soon. As I finish up editing this video, I will dedicate an entire day uh, to the Patreon. So those of you that are supporting on Patreon, thank you so much and thank you for your patience. Um, some things happened with me, but I, stuff I can't really talk about. Okay, enough with that. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. I really hope that today's episode helps you out. And if you have any ideas of what I can call this show, hopefully it's engaging enough to capture, you know, capture your your interest. Uh, so if you have an idea of what I can name this show, uh, you know, the Brave Brush, the Yupari Experience, um, titling it just Yupari, the Portrait Painter, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to paint other things other than portrait as well. But if you have any ideas, any more ideas um, about what I can title this show, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm also coming up with my own ideas. 
for what to title this show. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you on the next. And it's time now for our new patron shout out. So I'd like to give a special thank you to Roland Walterson. Hopefully I can pronounce your name properly. And this is actually an excellent time to talk about something that's going on with the Patreon. You see, I'm trying to message you to say thank you and to tell you that your shout out will be given this Saturday, right? Okay, so I'm on my iPad. This is the newest device that I have. It's a 20, um, 2018 iPad. Um, on the Patreon app, look at this, look at this. I, I can't send the message to tell you that your shout out is gonna be given on Saturday. And Patreon doesn't even work on my laptop because apparently you need to have like the newest MacBook uh, for that to work. So yeah, isn't that something? And that is just one of the very uh, many interesting things, <laughs> technological things that I still haven't uh, figured out how to deal with yet with Patreon, but I'm working on it and I've discovered that I can live stream uh, through my 2018 version of that iPad. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to set that up on my computer. Uh, as I said, my computer, it doesn't work on my computer. So there's a little more explanation into what's going on with the Patreon, but don't worry. Don't worry. If you're a patron on my Patreon account, don't worry. You're gonna be receiving even more exclusive content. Um, I will be uploading more posts and some patron-only specific videos, you know, like quick tutorials on proportions and eyes and things like that. Uh, I actually just filmed one on uh, how I use photo references, so you'll be able to see that post very, very soon. Again, thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next episode.